So we are in the second day of a three-day conference on farms and simple living. And uh, farm devotees from around the world, in different places around the world, have come for a three-day uh, three conference discussing simple living, agriculture, farm communities, and the future of our movement. So this verse was chosen in relationship to this, the theme of farm communities. And the day, yesterday we heard the previous verse from this one. And this is the next one. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Receive the age of Kali, text number 19. Dharma Uvacha, Dharma Uvacha, Kachipadram Namayan Atmanaste, Kachipadram Namayan Atmanaste, Kachasij Malya Yate Samukena, Alaksaya Bhavatim Atarada Dim. Dura Buddham ba, Dura Bandum So Chasi Chanjanamba Dura Bandum So Chasi Chanjanamba Dharma Uvacha Kachit Padram Namayam Atmanaste Chasi Malya Te Samukena Alaksaya Bhavatim Antaradim Dura Bandum So Chasi Kanchanamba Dharma inquired Kachit, whether, Badre, Madam, Anama, Mayam, quite hale and hearty, Atmana, self, Te, unto you, Vichaya, Asi, appear to be covered with the shadow of grief. Appear to be covered with the shadow of grief. Emmalata, which darkness, which darkness, isat, isat, slightly, mukena, by the face, alaksaye, you look, babatim, unto yourself, antaradim, some disease within, dore. Long distance. Long distance. Badum, Badum. Friend. friend. So to see. So to see. Thinking of. Thinking of. Kanchana. Kanchana. Someone. Someone. Amba. 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 O mother. O mother. <clears throat> so Dharma, or the bull, in the form Dharma is in the form of a bull, and the earth is in the form of a cow. So Dharma is addressing earth in the form of a cow, and the cow is in anxiety, a lot of grief and suffering. And so the bull, for re religious principles, is asking the earth, why are you suffering? So Dharma in the full form of a bull asks, Madam, are you not hailed and hearty? Why are you covered with the shadow of grief? It appears by your face that you have become black. Are you suffering from internal disease or you're thinking of some relative who is away in a distant place? Hmm. So some inquiry about the distressful conditions of the earth in the form of a cow. Purport. The Lord, 
of the world in this age, I'm sorry, the people of the world in this age of Kali are always full of anxieties. Yes, great. Yeah, anxiety key. <laughs> don't, don't follow that. <laughs> They're going to make new medicine now. Take this free from anxiety. We already packaged that. It's called Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We got the patent. They can't steal it. They can, they can borrow it and use it and get benefit from it. But we got the, we got the medicine. So, yes, everyone is diseased in some kind of ailment. From the very faces of people in this age, one can find out the index of the mind. Everyone feels the absence of his relative who is away from home. The particular symptom of the age of Kali is that no family is now blessed to live together. To earn a livelihood, the father lives at a place far away from the son, or the wife lives far away from the husband, and so on. There are sufferings from internal diseases, separation from those near and dear, and anxieties for maintaining the status quo. These are but some important factors which make the people of this age always unhappy. Om Agyanti Mirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Nena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudamani Pujarine Nirvishesha Shunyavani Pashtyatyane Satarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhar Sivasadi Gaudra Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Manda Sumanda Mataya Manya Bhaga Upadudha Kalena Akalena Sabdya. Can't remember the second line. Manda Sumanda Mataya. This is the essence of this verse is that people in this age are unlucky, misguided, uh, always disturbed. There's always some problems in Kali Yuga. It's the age. So here, uh, we see that the earth is in distress in the form of a cow. And Maharaj Pariksit has arrived on the scene, and Dharma in the form of a bull is also there, and he's being also punished and tortured. As you go on in this series of verses, you'll see a very nice dialogue between the, between the religious principles in the form of a bull and Maharaj Pariksit. So this age is considered a very difficult age, not only spiritually, but also we see pe people can't even live right. There's a statistic which I it's not only a, no, it's not only a statistic, it's actually a statement, I think, from Manu Samhita, or I heard it from monks devotees many times, that if you want to be happy materially, this is materially now, there's three things that are necessary, and two of them are things to avoid, and one is the thing to do. The three things are, one, don't travel for livelihood. Your livelihood should be local. And what is today's society? People are always traveling. Oh, I said two hours this way, two hours that way. I remember I was in Mumbai and I was riding a train to Pune, which is about a four or four and a half hour. And I met one young man on the train and we started talking. And he was saying, I live in Pune, Pune, but I work in Mumbai every day. He travels four hours each way just to go to work. I said, what is family life like? He said, well, we, I meet my wife sometimes for about an hour a day, and that's about it. I have a son, and he's a little bit 
unhappy because of my not being there so often. So I think this person is maybe a little bit extreme, but it's typical. We find that a lot of people just travel for, for employment. And Srila Prabhupada in one lecture makes the point that, uh, that people would travel in the Vedic culture, Vedic times, simply for pilgrimages and for if there was some pleasure trip, something for maybe some you might use the word in a loose way, vacation. And then people would travel, otherwise all livelihood was local. People didn't have to worry about that. So that's one of the features of miseries that cause people to be unhappy. And the second one is not to have any debts. Right? People are borrowing money from this, from this bank and that bank, buying houses, buying cars, buying this, buying that, everybody's in debt. The house has been mortgaged twice. So, you know, so many debts. People are always trying to work to try to cover their debts. So this is another feature of unhappiness in the material sense. And the third is that to eat home-cooked food. And the average statistic, or the statistic, that is that people in America Average once a week eating home. Most people, because they work and travel, they eat in restaurants or in other facilities. Hardly anyone eats home. So obviously there's a health you know, deficit because of that. So these three things, they say if you could eat home cooked food, don't have to travel for employment and don't have any debts, materially you're good, you're, good, you're stable. You have a, what we say, a, a stable material life like that. So, what we are trying to do, and what Prabhupada wants us to do, is to live locally. And he said, establish these farm communities. Grow your own food. Make your own cloth. Grow, learn how to go into the forest, into the woods, and also learn from the herbs how to make your own medicines and use that in order to treat the different various diseases. This one devotee he lives in New Taliban there. He has opened up a business called Blue Boy Herbs. He makes all the medicines that devotees need for the entire community. He also sells it to the outside. So he's developed it really nicely. And so, how much you have to pay for medicines? God has put everything in nature. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am the healing herb. All the medicine you need. Prabhupada talks about himself when he was a, a young man. He said, I had a very, very severe toothache. So, I couldn't somehow or other find a remedy for it. And so I went into the forest. One of my friends led me to this man in the forest. He was like a, you know, a herbalist and he had a little place there. He took some herbs, he rubbed it on the outside of my tooth and then a few, within a day or so, the tooth automatically fell out without any pain or any difficulty. So everything is there in nature. But we don't take advantage of that. We live in a society where you push a button, you go on the internet, you can buy something really fast and drive to the this way and that way. And this is, people are full of anxiety. And this is Bhagavatam, it's explaining here how people are always, what we say, manda sumanda mataya manya bhagya, upadritaha, always disturbed. And, yeah, there was one point I was just going to make, I forgot it. Mm. Always disturbed, yeah. Okay. Uh, forgot the, oh, yeah. So, in the 1960s and maybe in the beginning of the 70s, people were leave, leave, leaving, leaving the cities and going to the rural communities buying houses in the suburbs, big houses and now, you know, living out away and working in the cities, driving back and forth. 
And that went on for about three decades, four decades. Just within the last decade, everything is shifting back now. Why? Because it's boring out there. <laughs> Nothing to do. So now people are coming back into the cities, and the cities are now trying to provide for people whatever they need, entertainment, um, and even livelihood. Now the cities are now again becoming big, and people are going back. Why? Because when they went out away from the cities to get away from the distressful city life, there was nothing to do out there. Just having a big home. And, and mostly the young people were bored. They were bored. So now everything is moving back to the cities. But devotees know that unless you live close to Krishna, in other words, you, you make Krishna consciousness, then wherever you're living, it's nice. But ideally, simple living, high thinking. This is the model Prabhupada gave. Why is high thinking connected to simple living? Because simple living allows for high thinking. Whereas too much absorption in the material energy causes one to forget actually the goal of life and spend so much time just trying to, to use a word, struggle for a livelihood. So that we see now. And what is the statistics? More and more anxiety. The World Health Organization out of Washington, D.C., one of the biggest think tanks in the, in the world, which they collect statistics on practically everything, says by the year 2020, which is next year, one-third of the world will be suffering from mental diseases. It's only increasing. But we have the formula, simple living. Prabhupada said, you take a seed, you put it into the ground, you take care of that seed, you water, you cultivate, you get rid of the weeds, you grow that seed, you take that seed, you cultivate the plant, you bring it to the kitchen, you cook it, you offer it to the Lord. From the time that seed is put into the ground to the time it's offered to the Lord, and when the devotees take it, it's bhakti. What we do is we buy some stuff in the store, and then we offer it, and that's nice, and it's acceptable. But when we live in a very simple environment, we can actually, everything we do from the very beginning of that vegetable or whatever you're growing, fruit, is a process of bhakti. And therefore Prabhupada concludes this by saying, if you grow your own food, it is a hundred times more nutritious than buying food from the outside. It's a, that's an exact statement, a hundred times more nutritious. Today in our farm conference, we're going to be speaking about agriculture and growing food. That's going to be the main topic today. So this is, people have forgotten simple living because everything now seems to be convenient. You can get everything. But what else do you get? A hard struggle just to live. And therefore, people are dissatisfied. No one is happy. I remember I was in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was preaching there many years ago. And I had a good friend, and a very simple man. And so one day he invited me to come to his house. So I did. And he was a simple man, didn't have much. So we walked into his house, and I uh, walked into the living room, and his father was watching television. Hmm. So, okay, fine. So then I noticed that the room was divided with a curtain, and on the other side of the curtain, his brother was watching another television. <laughs> yeah, Two televisions in the same room, so I thought, I mean, that's, okay, it's a little strange, but then I noticed they were both watching the same program. <laughs> then I had to ask the question, <laughs> why? And the, the answer was, just in case one wants to change the channel. Obviously, that's a very practical answer. So we become so divided, even within the family, that there, as Prabhupada writes here, yeah, it was in the purport, to earn a life the follower who lives at a place far away and the son and the wife live far away from the husband and so on. I remember 
Prabhupada tells one story where one boy, after about five years old, he says to his mother, who's that man? She said, that's your father. Oh, he never saw his father because his father was always working when he was, when he was, uh, when he was up and when the, fa when the father was home, the boy was sleeping. Never saw his father for years. Okay. So then how can you expect a healthy and happy home life? It's impossible. So our present materialistic society has a plan to destroy families simply to create economic facilities where more and more people become consumers. If you, if you live in a more of a communal type life, then you can share resources, you can also share labor. And you can live with, Prabhupada said, you can work four months a year and the rest of the year you live off whatever you plant and reap for the whole year. People don't have to work hard. But it's so hard for people to be convinced that this is actually a, a lifestyle that is actually practical and healthy. In order for that to happen, people have to actually try it and see the benefit of it. So that's the basis of these farm communities, especially Sri Nuvrindavan. Where Prabhupada wanted simple living, agriculture, cow protection, and a college here to teach how to educate people according to their particular nature so they can also function in the most maximum possible way and contribute something to the society and to their own happiness. Von Ashram College. That was Prabhupada's idea for New Vrindavan. Prabhupada came here in 1968, again in 69, uh, 72, 74, 76. And in, I believe it was in 74, maybe the devotees who are here can correct me. I think it was 74. We had been dressing Radha Vindavan Chandra with grand opulences, most expensive silk saris. And Vrindavan Chandra himself, he had rings on every finger. <coughs> and so much jewelry, earrings, and it was just really opulent. Prabhupada looked and said, he told, turned to the leader of the community, Kirtananda Swami, he said, you are rich by nature, use more flowers. Use more flowers, less jewelry. So we did that, and we decreased the amount of jewelry. And actually, the deity became even more attractive, at least the devotees felt like that. Uh, the simple, Prabhupada said, flowers take birth so they can, and they pray that they can be offered to Krishna. And if you offer a flower to Krishna, that flower becomes, what we say, his life or her life, that life of that plant is perfect. So using flowers, we're doing that more and more now. But sometimes we don't do it enough. The flowers are there. I go to Mayapur and it's like, wow. If you've been to Mayapur, there's so many, many, many flowers. So, yeah, God has provided everything for us to live nicely, simply. But we're attached to these cities and people are suffering like crazy. Everything is breaking down. And Prabhupada said more and more the cities will break down and people will leave the cities and go to the forest. He said, we have to develop these farm communities. He said, we have two solid programs in our Krishna consciousness execution of devotional service. He said, book distribution, farm communities. That's all he said in terms of Sully. He said, what he meant by that is when you put time, energy and effort in these things, you will reap the maximum amount of benefit. These two things. And he wanted the devotees who were married to live on the farm. He said, the cities are for preaching. We said, we are in the cities simply because we are preaching. But our livelihood is on the farms. Or simple living. Even if it's not exactly a farm, if it's a royal community, where we grow food, keep a cow. Each family can have one cow or maybe two cows, a few acres of land, living in community, sharing resources. 
It's nice, it's easy, it's simple, it's natural, it's the way the Vedic culture was. And Vedic culture is human culture. What we live now is just riotous, to use a, a word. So here, this particular verse is really emphasizing how, at least the purport, Prabhupada said, people are so much in anxiety. Why? There's one statement in the Srimad Bhagavatam which explains that because of overeating, over sense gratification, and over dependence on another's mercy, he mentions three things, and an artificial standard of life, life has become shortened. In this age, memory, shortness of life, bodily strength, and mercy, these four things are decreasing continuously more and more and more. Why? Because we don't know how to live. And we don't understand the basis of our happiness is to worship Krishna. And worshiping Krishna is easy. Krishna says, Patram Pusram Falam Toyam Yome Bhakti Panasyati Taraham Bhakti Uparitam Asnami Vayatat Manaha Offer me a leaf, flower, fruit and water with bhakti. So on the, fla on the farm we have so much to offer to Krishna. But somehow or other we still have this, what we say, unfinished business. That's why Prabhupada said, just before he left the planet, 50% of my work is still undone. We have to establish these farm communities. That's exactly what he said. Otherwise, you know, how will our movement really be an example for the rest of the world? It won't be, and we won't actually be able to reap the benefits of the execution of Krishna consciousness because we have to straw. I mean, I see devotees who live outside. A lot of times they're really sincere devotees, but they have no time. No time for association with other devotees. They can barely fix, fit, fit in their rounds. They have, they're always, what we say, got some responsibility in the material world. More and more. And as society continues to fall apart, people will be more and more harassed. And one of the things that will happen, and you're seeing is now, taxation will become the main thing. More and more. You'll be working, I think it's now, I'm not sure, doctors in America, almost 50% of their paycheck is, uh, goes to various types of fees and taxations. The governments will far start falling apart and people will be becoming more and more taxed. I remember I went to the airport and uh, I was overweight. I was flying from one place to another. So the lady said, you have to pay 29 euros. I said, okay. So she gives me a little piece of paper. She said, you go to that window and you pay your 20. All right. So I went over there. I hand the lady 29 euros. She said, that'll be 34 euros. I said, 29 is the price. She said, we charge 5 euros to process it. I said, I don't really want your processing, you know. <laughs> she didn't want to hear that. <laughs> so, this is, you know, they always find more and more and more my ways to take your money. And money is useless, just paper. Prabhupada talked for a whole hour and a half talking about the whole artificial standard of finances that we got. It's just paper. The government falls apart. You take your paper and you just stuff your pillow with it. That's all it is. Real wealth is land, cows, precious metals. Cows means bulls also. <laughs> this is wealth. If you have land and you have livestock, you have wealth. Otherwise, this paper stuff is ethereal, and at any moment it could be gone. And it happens. It happened in India a few years ago, right? The government called all the big notes back, and people were burning. I would, we could see it. People were burning notes in the street. Thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds and thousands of rupees were being thrown away because the government decided to pull back and change the, the form of currency. That was only a few years ago. Could happen anywhere. So, therefore, if you think in terms of what is best for me, simple living like that. How to do that? Make a plan. You can't do it all at once. 
A plan has to be there. And that's what this Krishna Consciousness Society is trying to do, is make a plan not only for the devotees, but for a whole world how to live normally. <laughs> normally. I was just in New Rajadam in Hungary, and Shivaram Maharaj has got a vision for making things more and more simplified. Now there's no running water, right? Yeah. They stop running water at the houses and they take their water from the wells. I was there for three or four days. It was wonderful. We were drawing water from the wells, bring it into the house, use it for cooking, use it for bathing, use it for everything. And it was nice. At first I thought, oh, maybe this is a little inconvenient. But it was wonderful. They, they're saving so much money. And they're now they're using the natural well water that is there on their own property. Really wonderful water, too. So, yeah. So we're moving forward in some areas of the world, but not fast enough. Not fast. And we'll hear more about that today. So, time is short, and I think there is a... Uh, earlier starting of today's program, so I'll stop here and see if there's any comments, questions, simple living, high thinking, Krishna process. We have a microphone. <laughs> Go ahead. You you speak it all. Just repeat it. So, Your father is a family farmer. Yeah. Your so mother. We, we have land, hmm. um, and uh, I like grew up there, and I went to school um, in city, and then I, you know, started in India. In India, mm -hmm. and then came to US, and now doing the job here. So um, I kind of feel when I remember those times when I'm my childhood, when I used to go to the farm, and I really um, loved that. What your view was experienced today in the class, I think I connected back with how natural and pure this lifestyle is. Um, now, the question that I have is since uh, uh, you know, I have to work you know, for family here, do a job, and you know, started practicing Krishna consciousness. So, how do I uh, have you know, this farm community in, in this uh, now this farm community where I can come visit? But, yeah. How do I, how do I... You can come here. <laughs> they will welcome you, I'm sure. <laughs> if you have something to offer on a practical level, you'll be even more welcomed. <laughs> you know, your experience living on the farms. This is the future of our movement, hopefully. And it's not fast enough. It's not happening fast enough. And society is pushing us to become more aware of the need for this because everything is falling apart on that level. Um, I preach in Croatia and what some of the devotees are doing there. And there's devotees, a lot, of devotees, a lot of devotees have small little farms. And so what they're doing there is that two or three families living together in one rural area having one or two cows and trying to grow some food like that. So that's you know, that's a practical thing you can do on your own. The idea is to downsize this anxiety-type lifestyle so you can spend more time for Krishna consciousness. And you can't give Krishna enough time. It's just not... Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Everyone's quiet. Did I say something wrong? Please correct me. And Jai Ram Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, uh, thank you for this wonderful lecture. Again, at this far conference, 
been a breakthrough in so many ways. Uh, again, your picture contributes to it greatly. Um, Prabhupada said, this civilization is a doomed civilization. Doomed. Doomed. You also said the cities will be closed, was one of his statements. Um, people will come in masses from the cities to live and try to find food and shelter in New Vendal even. Mm. Get ready for it. Uh, he predicted everything will happen in, within the next 50 years. Now we're having 50 years celebration almost every year. When do you think will it happen? When do I think we will actually establish self-sufficiency? Is that the question? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, people don't know, and if there's a place, people are also looking. They're trying to readjust things, and there, and a lot of people are going into the area outside of the cities now and trying to start some little farm things. It's not happening fast enough. But that's not the solution. Just to live in the mode of goodness is not the goal of life. The goal of life is to actually live in that mode of goodness as a basis for practicing Krishna consciousness successfully and easily, naturally. That's the whole point. We're not advocating simple living without spiritual thinking. That's, not, that's, not, that's just a, a diversion away from the real goal. But Prabhupada spent so much time, so much time, I think Radha, uh, Hare Krishna Dasi could confirm that in her own work compiling Prabhupada's lectures and statements about how we should be living as a society. And he said, he said every temple should have, every, every city temple should have a farm. And he said, Make a restaurant in the cities, get your products from the farm, bring them to the cities, cook there, open a nice restaurant and teach and show people wonderful, wonderful foodstuffs that we grow on our farms. He said, then they will be attracted to Krishna consciousness. So that is like that. So he wanted every temple to actually have a farm connected with it or a source of what we say foodstuffs that we grow on our own farms. And basically it's just, it's about a health thing too. You, the food out there is, you can hardly eat it anymore. It's just full of pesticides and so many other forms of contamination. There was one man I heard recently, he works in the factory where they package food. He said, I wouldn't even eat any of this stuff with the way that we package it, the way we handle it, how unclean it is. So we're slowly poisoning ourselves with this, you know, this lifestyle. Yes. Yes, Madri. So, I will kind of play a parent's advocate on it. So, you know, this, we say simple living. At the same time, the so-called simple living, it may be simple, but it's kind of, it's quite hard and it's not easy. That's why people are not attracted. And when you, when I hear how you lived here before, it was not easy. Maybe it's simple, but it's not easy. And it, that's why people are attracted to this lifestyle they have now, which is hectic on one level. What, what's that old saying? Many hams make light work. <laughs> if you, how much, the more our people are doing it in the same area, the more easier it is. Because there's support from everyone. <laughs> when you try to do it yourself, it's a struggle. And what we did here in the beginning is we were struggling to get it started. We got it started up to a certain degree, and then as we were hearing just recently, things got diverted in another way. Never really manifested in a full way. I guess, you know, you saw it, I, I, in the new Rajadam, 
New Rajadam is actually the model for the world right now. It's really moving. And the thing is, they're inviting people to come and see the community from the outside. What is, we have actually a resident of Rajadam right here. Her name is Saranagati, and uh, she's been living there for a few months. And how many people come on the average every day just to see the community, or just in general? Uh, it differs according to what time of the year, but in the summer, there's, I don't know the exact number, but there's coastless people. People are coming all day. All day. And, it's, and devotees live really simple there. If you want to live there and you, you're accepted by the community, they build you a house, simple house, enough for your family and a little more. If you decide to leave, the house stays there. It's not yours. <laughs> it stays with the community. So. It seems like what's one of the things which are on the way is that our material desires and the influence of the material lifestyle which is out there in the world, mm -hmm. which is hard to change. I, I'm like, I see that I cannot change it easily. I would we like plugging things into the wall and getting all kinds of results from that. Yeah. Turn on the tap, there's the water. Right. So many other things come so easily. Yeah. But what are we sacrificing? Yeah. Sacrificing pretty much the proper consciousness that we need in order to practice Krishna consciousness. There's nothing against yukta vairagya, but if we're always, you know, in, the, in that mood, we don't, we'll never transition to the, to the stage where we can actually understand how to live happily and simply. Farms are not for everybody, but Prabhupada said for the grihastas, it's the best to have a school for the children, Goroko, kids can live together and grow up. They don't have to go to these slaughterhouses, which they call schools, like that. I see, I, I'm always getting, this happens to me all the time, people are coming to me, Maharaj, my kid goes to school, he comes back with all bad habits. They learn so many things from the non-devotees and they pick it up. When you're young, you're impressionable. So these uh, this, these farm communities are actually a stabilizer for the whole, for a holistic lifestyle, not just one aspect. We're not giving up anything when we when we move in this direction. We're just giving up the, the conception that well, that there's nothing better than what we have. So it's a transition. You can't do it immediately. You make a plan. Within five years, you go. You see where you can go from where you are now to the ideal situation. That's how they're doing it in New Rajadam. It's gradually, step by step, more self-sufficiency, more agriculture, more reducing the uh, dependencies on the, on people from the outside. So that's a good example, and there's other communities that are also moving like that. So that's the future of our movement. Yes, uh, Gaur Shakti Prabhu. When Shiva Prabhu was here in 1974, he stayed at the opposite of the palace. And uh, we, had, we had a house here, which was no longer there. But there was a garden, small garden outside the house. Hmm. And Shiva Prabhupada's cook would pick the vegetables from the garden bring them into the kitchen and cook them and offer the prepared food to Shiva Prabhupada. And he said, this is how we should live. Mm -hmm. Growing our own food is just so fresh. It's grown by the devotees, offered to the deities, offered to the guru, and he was just very, very, very happy about that type of life. Mm -hmm. uh, also, another comment, um, the, one of the reasons that we are encouraged to grow our own food is because by the Lord's arrangement, the the foods that are locally grown, if you eat them in season, they contain the natural um, remedies and antidotes <coughs> to the local seasonal diseases that blow through everywhere. Mm. And that's just part of the Lord's arrangement. Also, uh, years ago, uh, <coughs> I went through and his wife, Mother Juna, they had a family. 
Mm. He had four or five kids and two dogs. And uh, I asked Jamuna, you know, how, this milk that the cow gave, you know, how long did she give the milk? And, and you know, was the quantity sufficient and not enough too much? He said, a family of six or seven said we could never use all the milk. And that cow gave milk after she was bred and, and, and calved, she gave milk continuously for seven years. Yeah. And you know the common the common conception is that we have to breed them every year to get milk. But no, the cow is so like she's part of the family. Right. When the cow is welcome as part of the family and is cared for according to whatever she needs or he needs as a bull, they're happy. And when they're happy, it's a whole different experience. Prabhupada writes that in the Bhagavatam. The milk bags become fatty and they drip the milk without even being milked. <laughs> yeah, when you see the happy cows give more milk automatically. And he also writes in, in, in the first canto that when the cows are happy, then human society can prosper. Right. And if cows are not happy, that's your mother. You're not happy either. You can't be fully happy. If someone is there that you need to take care of and you don't take care of it, you can't expect to be happy by neglecting someone else, especially the cow, because Krishna is Gopal. <laughs> and he's also Govinda, we heard that. Okay, so things are going to start a little bit earlier today, so I don't want to take too much time. So. Simple living, high thinking, high living, no thinking. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Hare Krishna.